I'm pleased to say joining us now, America's Newsroom co-host Bill Hemmer. Uh, hey guys. Bill, this was interesting. We have some new yeah. polling coming out showing mm -hmm. that 86% of Democratic Biden voters are comfortable with Harris becoming president if Biden becomes unable to serve in a second term. This is all as concerns mount over Biden's age, yeah. as we just heard from Hillary. What do you think? I just want to make a note that Hillary dodged that light post very well. Yeah, that, as that was she, did you catch that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> she had a good line, too, about what? Changing dirty diapers? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to dirty line. I, I think this poll is really interesting. I, I think for a lot of Republicans, I think numbers kind of surprising because you put the two together as to whether or not you would support. These are Democrats now. What's your comfort level with Kamala Harris? You put 53 and 32 together, and right, you're at 85%, as you just showed there. If you want to find out how Republicans feel, I think a lot of those numbers would be the opposite yeah. way. But where are the independents, right? You know, did, did, I don't think Suffolk did the independents no. in this number. But I, I think that's a higher number that most people would think about. One more thing. Yeah. Emily's List is spending $10 million now to boost Kamala Harris's profile. I think that number will go higher, but obviously there's an effort but to get it, her that's better because exposure. It, unless you're a Republican who's already said no and you're a Democrat who said yes, yeah. if you're independent, what do you know about Harris? I mean, what do you well, what do you I, actually? I, guess, I mean, isn't yeah. that the reason you're spending the 10 million? Because yeah. their view is, as much as we might talk about her, a lot of people just don't know who she is and even what she's done. Yeah, I think her portfolio was given the border, right? And she ran off to Central America to look for root causes, and the border's gotten no better, and it's still a big issue, and. You can make up your own mind as to whether or not she's passed or failed on that assignment. Well, to me, I mean, when I heard the poll results, you're right, my eyes kind of popped open because mm -hmm. I thought to myself, she was given one thing to do. What else has she accomplished during this term? Um, she's not really in the spotlight. Every time she is out in front, she can't get a sentence out straight. She makes awkward jokes. So the fact that the majority of Biden voters were saying we would be okay with this was, was I mean, it was a little surprising yeah. even for them. You know, I, I, she's been a huge, a colossal failure. My feeling is you can walk out in the sidewalk here and get hit in the head with a pole because everybody's doing them, right? This is right. just one. Right. But it gives you a, a, a sort of a sense as to where Democrats are with her. And again, I think it's a surprising result for a lot of other people. Does RFK Jr. count as a third party candidate? Does he count? A um, lot of people would say maybe he doesn't quite fit into any bucket. Yeah, that same poll did uh, ask whether or not you'd look around for a third party candidate. They found one in four people that they asked would. Mm. Um, the challenge there is all third party challengers have really. They've just done okay. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt got 20%, all right, but that was like 1912, right? And Ross Perot got 19% in 2000, 1992. Yeah. Uh, Mark Penn was on our show earlier today with Dana and me, and he was running polling for Bill Clinton in 1992. He found that 35% of Americans would vote for Ross Perot. Mm -hmm. That's how high he thought the margin yeah. was. Now, it ain't close to that. It was almost less than half at 19%. But it shows you at a certain time, people are willing to get a third party. Well, let me ask you this. If Biden does move forward and RFK has to drop out, do the RFK votes automatically go to Biden? I mean, I guess it depends right. who your candidate is on the GOP side. It's a good question. If it's Trump, it becomes very divisive. If, yeah. it's some, if it's somebody else, maybe you see a switch. Yeah, my feeling is that, like, for Republicans, your challenge is getting oxygen. With all these legal issues facing yep. Trump, yep. he could be in the news once a week for another legal challenge. Right. Yeah. Is there going to be motions? There's going to be moments of discovery. Um, who knows what Atlanta does in Fulton County? The DA said they concluded the grand jury uh, two months ago, and she'll release the results later on in the summer. Right. Oh, is that July or is that August? That, that's another case that's coming out. Right. Here. So for the Republican candidates, their challenge is to get oxygen around the whole Trump issue. All right, so speaking of that oxygen, let's talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal editorial board writing about the, quote, self-destructive Donald Trump. The indictment is misguided, they say, but he made it easier for his enemies, like always. The former president, though, raking in roughly $2 million during his fundraiser last night. Trump was urging prosecutors to drop the charges against him. Listen. Whatever documents the president decides to take with him, he has the right to do so. It's an absolute right. This is the law. And that is something that people have now seen, and it couldn't be more clear. They ought to drop this case immediately because they're destroying the country. 
Bill, on the one hand, they say self-destructive. On the other hand, he just raised $2 million, and he's given something uh, to focus on for people. And give How it do a, you read it? Yeah, Brian, give it a few more days, maybe even to the weekend or early next week. We'll get a sense as to whether or not he got another bump from what happened this week, like he did here in New York. Um, at the end of that Wall Street Journal editorial, um, it concludes with, his role on January 6th is well known, but had he accepted the election results, he might now be coasting the nomination and have an excellent chance to win. I, I, it, it's hard to disagree with that. Now, <clears throat> hindsight is perfect, but when all the other candidates get on stage on the 23rd of August, they're going to compare their policies with Donald Trump. Um, and they're going to be able to question his four years in office. He had a lot of wins, yep. but they'll try and find cracks in his policies where they think they could have executed better. The advantage they will have is exactly what they stated. Hindsight. It's perfect for them. Looking back in the rearview mirror. Yeah. How do Republican voters view this now? I, I, these debates... They are going to be must-see TV they are, they for are. those contending for yeah, this nomination. They're, they're, they may have the advantage of hindsight. They've got the disadvantage that there's only so much oxygen in the room. we got to leave it there. Bill. Nice to see you guys. Thanks. Likewise. Likewise. Have a great day. Our pleasure. <laughs> right on.